I'm writing this down because there are only two options left as I see it. Either I'm going crazy and need to be committed immediately, or the things that I'm seeing are real. And I'm not sure what happens then. I'm not sure who to turn to, or if anyone will believe me, but this feels real. I'm afraid, but I know what's real. And I need to know that someone else will know what's going on, no matter what happens to me. I'll start at the beginning. I've always been somewhat of a recluse, not out of misanthropy, I just prefer my own company. I manage to get by doing freelance programming work that pays the bills, but it also allows me a great deal of freedom with my schedule. I've always been a night owl, so naturally I gravitated to a nocturnal schedule, and one where I never needed to worry about when I slept or woke up. Once I was free from the tyranny of alarm clocks, I became interested in exploring my dreams. I always had vivid dreams quite frequently, and I was trying to master lucid dreaming, so when I first heard of the Dream Viewer device, I ordered one immediately. I've always been interested in electronic gadgets. I'm sure you could probably tell that by the fact that I'm recording this on a note recorder and not just writing it down on paper, but among all the technology I'd seen in my life, the Dream Viewer was something completely different. When it arrived in the mail, I immediately opened it. I watched the instructional tapes, and I began using it that very same day. Of course, it worked exactly as advertised, but I began to notice something strange happening over time. As soon as I started using the Dream Viewer, all my dreams had a strange undercurrent. It wasn't something I could put my finger on at first, but the inhabitants of the dream worlds that I visited all seemed to get more and more reclusive, paranoid, and despondent as time went on. I also found it impossible to lucid dream. Somehow I'd, I'd always forget to reality check myself despite being so diligent about it in the past. At first these symptoms were very mild and ignorable, so I kept using the device without thinking much of it. However, that changed the day I had one particular dream. The first thing I remember was that I was in a massive cave of blue ice. Winds howled around me and I could feel the cold gusts against my face. I wasn't alone though. This older man and I were journeying further into this cave, and soon we came across an old house, frozen in the ice. We worked to free the door from the ice and opened it. Once inside, we broke apart some wooden furniture and made a fire. I asked the man, why are we here? And the first words that I had spoken to him. He said, I cannot escape from here, but you can, if you can break your fate. Then he raised one gnarled finger up and pointed out the warped glass of the window. I stood and peered through the glass. Outside I saw a shadowy door standing on the other side of the cave. At first I couldn't make out a single feature, just a black rectangular shape, but as I stared I could pick out more and more details in its presence. It shook me to my core. Its frame consumed my entire vision. It was something that somehow I knew was there before, but I had never truly seen. Its perspective was off, its corners bent the wrong way, something about it was just wrong. When I woke up, I could remember the details of my dream as well as any, but when I tried to remember even a single detail of that door, it slipped from my mind like trying to grasp flowing water in my hands. I could feel that there was once detail in that form, but now it was completely missing from my mind. After that, my dreams always ended the same way. I would go through this world for some time. Not always in the ice caves, of course. It could be in a forest or in a city. It didn't matter. But then, at some point, I would look at a faraway wall or into a corner of a room, and I would see that door. But once I saw it, I would just stop and stare, and it would slowly fill my vision and my mind until I woke up. It didn't matter if I used the dream viewer or not. I would only have these dreams, and I would always see the door. Despite seeing it every time, I could never remember it other than just as a dark and formless mass of wood. It was like there was a door casting a shadow, but the shadow was all I could ever remember of it. I feared seeing it. I feared even thinking about it. It became all-consuming. I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. It felt so silly to be afraid of something so mundane, so ubiquitous. I couldn't just tell people about something I could barely explain to myself. Another night, maybe two weeks later, I had another dream. I was in a car, being driven through a dense city that was crawling with soldiers. The car was 
driven by someone I knew, and I was hiding in the back seat because this occupying military force was hunting me. Eventually, we made our way down a twisting alleyway. We exited the car, and we went up some stairs to a small apartment in a large, grimy building. The guy who had driven me there and I sat at a table across from an older woman in a small room with a high ceiling, lit by yellow sconces that glowed with a sick electricity. She spoke to us in hushed tones of a group called the Children of Minos, who had taken control of the city. We were part of some sort of resistance, and for a moment I remembered hearing these names before these phrases, and some forgotten memory returned to me. But just as this happened, we heard a pounding at the door downstairs and a splintering of wood. They told me to get to the roof and hide myself, and pointed me out the fire escape as they rushed out the other door. I ran out and grabbed the rough metal rungs of the ladder in my hands, flying up the rickety framework as the sounds of violence grew louder behind me. I pulled myself up on the last balcony, onto the roof. There, waiting for me at the far end of the roof, was the black door. This time, though, I didn't immediately freeze upon seeing it. I took some tentative steps towards it, and then as I heard shouting and the clanking of boots climbing rungs, I moved faster. I reached the threshold, and the presence of the door blocked out all other sensation from my mind. I could barely hear the soldiers scream at me and ready their guns over the ringing and thrumming in my ears. It pulled me closer to grasp the handle, and the cold metal pierced my mind. I turned the knob, and the rotation echoed through my body and made my stomach do somersaults. I pushed forward and fell into the thick, inky abyss. I must have fallen for days. At least, it felt like days. It very well could have been weeks. I felt the barrier between my body and the darkness become unstitched, like a thread being pulled along my skin that let my soul spill out. My senses became detached and foreign to each other. I could see texture and undulation in the void, hear far-off echoes and feel the wind blow through what was left of my physical form, but all of these sensations felt like they were happening separately, like my body and mind were being stretched like taffy across a tapestry of chaos. I existed in this state, being fundamentally broken, but still conscious like grains of sand being blown through a pitch-black sandstorm. After a time, it, it all just sort of ended. I fell back into my body with the force of a truck hitting a brick wall. I screamed, forcing air out of unfamiliar lungs in a primal expression of terror. I choked and screamed, my muscles firing from the base's instinct, propelled me out of bed and onto the floor where I thrashed for a few moments before remembering where I was, who I was. Once my eyes adjusted to the light and I could recall how to move my body, I checked my computer's calendar. It had only been seven or eight hours since I had fallen asleep. Everything was just as I had left it. That was last week. Since then, I haven't been sleeping. I don't want to go back there. The caffeine pills are keeping me going fine enough, but my headache is getting worse and worse. I can barely concentrate, and as I look over at my bed, part of me is begging to slip under the sheets and rest, but I just can't do it. I know I can't keep this up much longer, but three days ago, I saw it in the corner of my eye in my living room. When I tried to look directly at it, it disappeared just as quickly, but since then, it's been showing up more and more, and now it doesn't go away when I look at it. I can see it now. It's on the far wall of my bedroom. It's like a monolith carved out of pitch black sky. I can see the frame now, and the handle. I don't know what's going to happen. I think this is the only way to end this. I have to go through again. I have to go through. <laughs>